I'd like to take uh, just a minute to recognize three local women of character, courage, and commitment. Now, these women walked into my office about two months ago as part of the Women's History Month Committee and said, sir, we've got some plans. They said, first, we would like to do this Women's History Month from a bilateral perspective. For the first time ever, the code would make a deliberate effort to bring our Japanese counterparts here on base with us. So whether that was career day, whether that was self-defense class, whether that was with the Killer Run 5K, our Japanese counterparts were there with us. I thought, this is a great idea. It's one of the women's priorities. It goes with USFJ's priorities. It's certainly part of the ambassador's priorities. But then they lowered the boom. And sir, we would like the US ambassador to speak at lunch. And I said, you don't realize what you just asked to do. And that's going to be something that's going to require a tremendous amount of work and dedication. But I will tell you, these ladies did an amazing job. This is the best month of any type of event that we've done to date that I've seen in my time in command here in the 374 Caribbean. They put courage, commitment, character, passion, and integrity. And yes, you can applaud them. So I'm going to have them stand up and embarrass them here in a second. So we'll start with the applause and we'll have them stand up. See that even who they were before I went to their names. So Captain Jones, Captain Weeks, and National Sergeant Ward, thank you for an amazing lunch. guest speaker who joins us today is a, is a Japanese Air Self-Defense Force retiree of 34 honorable years. She is the first of her kind, the first female active duty Air Defense Force officer to attain the rank of general, and the first female officer of the Japanese Self-Defense Forces appointed as a base commander. Please welcome Major General Keiko Kashihara. This year marks the 40th anniversary of the birth of the women's air self-defense force. I would like to share with you its history today. Kennedy tells me that he had a short time to stay around in the room. The woman came from America, the Dubuque Center, and 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 the Dubuque Center, as Ambassador Kennedy alluded to on our Twitter account, Deborah Samson disguised herself in order to serve in the Continental Army during the American Revolutionary War. Approximately 150 years ago, a Japanese woman named Hateko Nakano also put on a man's double uniform and fought in the battlefield. So, 
自衛隊で受験自衛官を採用するようになった理由をまず伺います。Uh, so、some of you have taken、uh, for granted for many years that combat duty is a male specific role. There are, however, two reasons why Japan's self defense forces started recruiting women to join the forces. Uh, fighter pilot officer, I'm hoping that in the very near future, 
future in jazz ensemble as well, we are going to see uh, those female pilots. Now, uh, second phase began. In the next 20 years, we work to extend the average length of service for women. When I joined the JSDF, uh, which is not such a long time ago, uh, it was only about 35 years ago, at least 75% uh, of Japanese people believed that women should resign from their work to become full-time stay-at-home moms. In many cases, women in JSDF were led into retirement before getting married or having a baby. During those days, we were often criticized by our supervisors, saying, we don't need women because they're all bailed out by that woman when they become a full-fledged JSDF. To counter this situation, the Ministry of Defense introduced a child care leave system to enable women to keep their posts after childbirth. In addition, the Ministry opened daycare centers in several ground self defense post camps. Unfortunately, however, we have not been able to open such facilities on air self defense post bases yet. However, many women in JSD are now taking advantage of the system and challenging the balance of career and child rearing. We have made huge impacts as far as career opportunities and medical service goes in the past 40 years for women in JSDF. Now, let me talk to you about the events and beauty pilots. All justice officers have to take the justice command and staff course to be promoted to senior officers. In order to be selected for the course, they have to pass an examination for which they have to vigorously study and prepare. It is, however, an extreme challenge for women to prep for it while raising children. Until about 10 years ago, only a few women, including myself, passed this exam, all of whom were either single or married with no children. In recent years, however, we've started to see women who finish the course and are able to take care of children at the same time. 
He had been more women who made the challenge to take on posts for Chief of Staff JASTA or ABC. In the next 20 years, I hope to see many more women assuming leadership positions with more responsibility who will contribute to national defense, peace and stability in the world. Who knows? We may have our first female Chief of Staff 20 years from now. で、we women do not have to live life that is determined by anyone other than ourselves. We are able to choose our own destiny and to fulfill the mission of our children. As a pioneer of women in Jasper, I've always strove to write the misconception that women are second rated JSDF. For all of us who have no role models to look up to, women in the United States Air Force became a beacon. We were greatly inspired and encouraged to see you on par with your male colleagues and how you gave all to fulfill your deep duty. I'm convinced that the United States Air Force, which advocates for equal rights among men and women, will continue to inspire its allied partner, the men and women of Japan's South Defense Forces. I hope that men and women of JSDF will inspire you with their diligence in return. Lastly, I sincerely hope that JSDF and United States forces will continue to strengthen ties far into the future. Thank you. Thank you. 